Okay, so I've been sent a Pi and Man 5 case for a Raspberry Pi 5, which takes an NVMe drive and definitely looks really impressive. But before I do that, I thought I'd show some love to the older case, which is the Pi and Man, which was designed for Raspberry Pi 4. I've been playing around with this case and a Raspberry Pi 4, and it's actually a 2 gig Raspberry Pi 4 in here. And I'm actually amazed at the performance of the Pi 4 with my version of KDE. Don't worry about the scrolling of the display, it doesn't do that in real life, you just see it when it's recorded with a camera. In fact, it's, it's still there, that looks alright now. Oh, it's gone again. But uh, it's not doing it when you look at it with the naked eye. So let's have a look at this operating system. Because I think the GitHub has been updated since I last looked. So uh, I've run the installation on this, this is my version of KDE Plasma. And uh, as long as you don't run lots of programs at the same time or open loads of tabs, it actually runs fine on a 2 gig Pi 4. But uh, obviously if you overload it, it's going to run out of RAM and slow down. But yeah, just to show, uh, this is the GitHub and all the installation was just these two bits of code. And that turns on all the LEDs, turns on the fan and everything else. But the fan is controllable. And you'll probably notice my fan isn't on at the moment. There's no sound coming from the Pion Man. Uh, but if I go into the terminal and uh, change that, so the default it sets to is 45. And you can see here from the instructions, uh, so Pion Man and then option, so in this case, dash F or dash dash fan, and then the temperature, so 45. So if I hit enter, it will very quickly restart and you can hear the fan is on. I'll move a bit closer. But I don't want it to be on most of the time so that's why I went for a higher temperature. Now I did do 75 at one point but I think 65 is fine because it rarely comes on at that at all and obviously when it goes lower in temperature the fan goes off again. So let's just do that and the fan's gone off already. And you can do loads of things with the RGBs and all sorts of things in here. But yeah, I just thought I, I would show that and show how it runs. And also just surprisingly that my version of KDE Plasma does run really quite well on a Raspberry Pi 4. It's going to be better on a Pi 4 with 4 gig or even 8 gig of RAM. Because as you'll see, free memory is, is rarely very much. Uh, but uh, there are lighter weight operating systems for Pi 4s with only 2 gig of RAM. And another reason why this is running so well on a Pi 4 4 gig is because of the drive it uses. So I've already removed the screws from the base of this. It doesn't usually fall off. Uh, so you can see I've got an M.2 SATA drive in here, not an M.2 NVMe drive. NVMe drives are a bit overkill on a Raspberry Pi 4 because you still have to use the USB 3 connection because there isn't a dedicated connection for a faster drive. Unlike the Pi 5, which we have a PCIe slot, which is where this little ribbon cable is going to. So then we can use nice, fast NVMe drives, which is what the Pi Man 5 uses. So let's build up that case. So let's have a look inside. Hopefully there's not as many bits as the other one. Okay, so there is a huge amount of kit. You can see the ice cube cooler is here uh, and it's got a fan on it already. Uh, this has also got the proper fan connection for Pi 5, so the PWM, so temperature controlled fan. So that probably doesn't need any software for that bit. Although we do have two other fans and they probably do need the software from SunFounder. So we've got three fans in total. Got a few bits of acrylic here, which is obviously the clear bits, thermal pads. This adapter, which gives us full size HDMI. Uh, so that's interesting. So that board could be used on its own without all the case and everything I would imagine. Uh, we've also got the NVMe board as well. And we've got the GPIO one, which is obviously going to power some of these other bits and things. OLED display, a battery, loads and loads of little bits, power switch, similar power switch to the one before. Just an unbelievable amount of screws. Some feet and an SD breakout board. And then we've got this aluminium housing. It all does look very nice. Right, let's get building. Looks like we got some fairly detailed instructions. I did find with the Pion Man, the original one, sometimes when you had to plug some cables in, it wasn't that clear which one was which. But this looks like it's more using connectors rather than individual cables that have to be plugged in the right place. Yeah, the fans are going to be 
two individual cables, but everything else looks like you can only plug it into one place. I've got a four gig Pi 5 and uh, I never like taking off the official heat sink. Okay, that's off. Gosh, even the start is pretty tricky. Uh, so you've got different sizes. Obviously the bags were labeled M.2.5, M.2.8 and M.2.6. So they're, diff they're all different sizes. And so the sixes have to be here and here, which is like that. And so different heights in different places. Because you only use two of these, but you've got three in total, I'm making sure to put each one on top of the sticker that tells me which one it is, because when I get back to it, it's very hard to tell them apart. So let's pop the SD card adapter in, which is this one. You can see there's holes to hold it in place. Uh, and we've also got the full-size HDMI. So if I pop that together, that goes together really nicely. So that's connected via USB-C and the two HDMIs, and that gives us USB-C for power and also full-size HDMIs all on the same side. So I've added this four-pin header, the battery, and also this two-pin cable. Got two of these PCIe cables, one might be a spare. That's the PCIe cable in place. So the reason they're different heights is because we've got the SD card adapter here, which is lower than the Pi, but obviously it's not on this side, so that's why this needs to be a bit taller than this one. Okay, and that's where I stop because I was just putting this screw in and this bit broke off. So this is supposed to be soldered onto here. I don't know how important it is. So it is this one here and it is labeled RTC, so I guess real time clock. So I think I'm probably gonna be able to get away without it. So I think we're just gonna carry on building up. So this is the bit the spanner's for, just to tighten up the power switch. Now in the thermal pad picture, we've got three thermal pads which have been supplied. So the components they've chosen to cover, not the RP1 chip, uh, we've got the CPU, GPU, this is the power management, and also this is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that's the bits that it's directly contacting with to keep cool. And it's got these to connect the fan. I would rather screws, but that's what we've got. Yeah, they've gone in fine. And then the fan control cable is in the official slot for it. Then we've got the Pi 5 power switch converter, which is gonna go on here. And look at these long pins. So they basically will interact with these two holes, which are here. You can just about see them. So when that goes in on top, so we can see those two pins a sat in place here. So that's the ribbon cable connected to the NVMe part. And the long pins here go up inside this bit. So that needs to line up perfectly. So the pins are making contact to power this board, which is good that the NVMe board is powered because a fan, if you're just using the PCIe, it's not powerful enough if you attach another drive. Um, so this isn't taking power away from USB. That's, just, that's definitely found its place now. Oh yeah, and you can actually see the pins through it. So you can screw the NVMe part in and it looks like all of the sizes are supported. So whatever length your NVMe drive is, you can just move this to adapt to it, which is quite nice. Sometimes they just miss it out. And we've got some dust filters here that go inside here. The dust covers are a nice touch. It's unusual on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you, usually there's quite a big opening uh, so that's a nice touch. So I've got an acrylic plate. I've just taken one side off and I need to get the other bit off. And that goes over here, but then it's riveted on. And these just pop in and secure it to the board. And the OLED screen attaches to this. So I've connected the fans onto this board and the GPIO pins have slotted onto the Pi, which was fiddly. I quite like that the GPIOs are all labeled. Okay, so I reckon I've mounted the fans the wrong way around because they are rubbing against the outside of the case. Uh, I had to actually loosen them a bit because they weren't spinning at all. But yeah, so I'm going to flip them around. I thought I had it the right way around on the picture because the stickers are going into the case, which is what I've done. Uh, my mistake, it needs to say Ice Cube on the inside. There's stickers on both sides of these. That's better. Now it's not making loads of noise. And you can see the fans spinning on the inside. And the OS has booted, so everything's running okay. So after it's all built, I've got quite a few bits left over. So I had a spare of these cables. Obviously, this is the cable with the bit that broke off my Pi. 
Uh, I've got a spare M.2 screw. Uh, this bit I forgot to put in, it's basically to show the uh, light on the front of the Pi. It, it's just a, like a bit of acrylic, uh, so I'm probably not going to bother putting that in. I've got a couple of standoffs, uh, a GPIO, I don't know what that is, I haven't seen that in the instructions. Spare PCIe cable, uh, obviously the screwdriver and the uh, spanner. And uh, I've also got another another bolt here. Uh, I've got a couple of these spare ones for the heatsink, a couple of screws for the fans. Some of these I haven't put in yet because uh, I've just put it together to get it working, so there won't be as many as this left over. But yeah, quite a few bits, and I was pleased with the instructions. It was better than the previous one, uh, although it is still quite fiddly compared to most other cases. So it's definitely a great looking case. Um, I did put the little Perspex bit in here for the light. It just pushes in afterwards and kind of locks in place. So I didn't miss it out, it was fine. Um, so next to the original case, obviously the original case was a lot smaller. Didn't have those uh, mesh grills for the air intake. So I suppose that's one upgrade. Uh, also the accessibility to um, the NVMe drive is really quite good in this. So I'm probably just going to put a couple of screws in uh, so that I can take this off really quickly and get access to it. Obviously, if you don't need access to your NVMe drive on a regular basis, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so these two fans have been on all the time so far because they're just powered. I think they're probably 5 volt. I maybe would change them to 3 volt to make them a little bit quieter. Um, but obviously then the cooling would be a little bit less effective. But then that said, the, the fan on the heatsink I don't think has come on yet. Uh, and it's been on for quite some time. I've been playing videos on it and uh, you know, it's coping really well. So cooling is very good. I like the fact we've got the SD card slot on the front, but also all of the connectivity is on the back with full size HDMI. So that's really nice. So let's have a look uh, how we're getting on. In fact, let's see how long I've had the computer running for. So if I run NeoFetch, that will tell me how long it's been up. Yeah, two hours, 22 minutes. And as you can see, the hottest temperature, uh, and I think this is interesting, is the RP1 chip. Now, I think the RP1 chip doesn't get super hot, but it does tend to, to heat up. But I don't, think, I don't ever see it go to really high levels. Uh, so this could be the reason they've chosen not to uh, put a heat sink on. Uh, I think it's a, a bit of a strange decision. But then, as I say, I haven't seen the RP1 chip get super hot. So when you start working the pie really hard, I don't think the RP1 gets really hot, whereas the CPU, GPU definitely does. Uh, and so the fan uh, obviously is going to make a big difference to that. This doesn't monitor the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so I don't know how hot that's getting. Certainly the power supply bit uh, does get hot, so that's definitely worth it. But this has been running without their software. So let's have a look at so Pine Man 5 GitHub. Yeah, here we go, Pine Man 5. So it will talk about compatible operating systems. So this version of KDE is based on Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit bookworm. But you can see it's working with the latest version of Ubuntu, Kali Linux, uh, and it may work with some other systems. This is things they've tested it with. So let's try it. Well, this step I don't need, so let's just do this one. So let's open the terminal. And while it's doing that, let's have a look and see if we've got something similar. Oh, so different in the way that the one for the old Pine Man had a load of commands on it. And we've got usage here. Yeah, so whereas the other one was more configurable, I don't know if this is because this is newer. Oh, the fan's gone off. Ah, there we go. So that must mean that it's installed. So the main fans have gone off, so there's nothing cooling it now. So I'm going to say yes to restart. Okay, so current temperature is 53 degrees. Uh, let's show you what happens when the fans come on. Uh, I've already done this once, but it wasn't recording. Uh, so let's get a playlist and let's just pick a video from here. And what's it running at? 1080, 60, that's good. So let's just leave it going and see how long. So we're already on 57, 58 degrees. I can see that this fan is on. So the one on the ice cube tower but these at the back haven't come on. They come on around about 60 by default. Because the trouble is that this fan's doing a good job of keeping it cool.
So you can see the lights have come on and they cycle through different colors. And uh, if I was to stop playing a video, so immediately the CPU would stop working hard, they go off pretty quickly. It's not gonna happen now. What are they on, 56? Oh, there you go, so they've gone off already. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. Um, I'll have a look out to see if there's any more configuration for the temperatures that comes on and goes off like there was with the older case, because I haven't seen it yet, but I might have just missed it. But things I really like about it, I like this little uh, light indicator to show the status on the Pi. Sometimes in cases you lose that. Uh, I also like the fact that the SD card is super accessible. Uh, the OLED display, I, don't, I like the look of them. I don't tend to use them very much because they are tiny, um, but I've got separate videos where I've showed different patterns and displays and things like that you can put on there if you want something cool to display on it. Uh, I really like the accessibility of the NVMe slot, uh, so I've just left two screws in for convenience so I can just take those out and I can easily swap out the NVMe. I realize that m not many people change their NVMe on a regular basis, but I definitely do. Uh, and I like the fact that we've got all the connectivity on the back and full-size HDMIs. It is just a really well thought out case. Yeah, it's a bit of a, uh, a fuss to put it all together, but it wasn't unenjoyable. The bit I broke was broken off my pie, not off the pie and man. So uh, it is just something that I guess the solder is a bit loose or I caught it a little, little bit too rough. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.